This week, a couple of pies were launched into space. Somebody thinks Internet of Things stores are going to be a thing. And Arduino gets a new family member. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Micro News. We have some really interesting stuff happening this week, so let's hop right into it. First up, the Astro Pi launch happened on Sunday, I think it was. After a few scrubbed launches from bad weather, finally we're able to launch that. The payload was two Raspberry Pis and a couple of Sense hats. This was aboard an Orbital Sciences uh, Cygnus cargo freighter sitting atop an Atlas V rocket. And pretty cool, it's going up to rendezvous with rendezvous. Rendezvous with the International Space Station and um, just some interesting stuff about this. This really gets back to the roots of Raspberry Pi. So I just thought it was really cool that the Pi is really only about four years old when we went to mainstream launch. And now they're being sent to the International Space Station to have experiments uh, performed. But the cool part about this is that those experiments were written by school children in the UK. So Raspberry Pi continuing to show that its focus is on uh, school children, the, the, that age group, and education, really. And so I think it's funny, a lot of people like to throw it head-to-head -head against other things that are trying to be Internet of Things platforms and how they're going to kill the Pi. The Pi is dominating in education. Uh, nobody else is coming close to them at this point, and they continue to show that that really is the focus. It's cool that we can do all these Internet of Things things with the Pi, but really, education is the, the focus of the foundation, and they're continuing to execute against that. Okay, next up, I don't talk about Kickstarter projects a lot, mostly because there's like a billion of them for Internet of Things every week, and most of them you shouldn't waste your money on if you actually want to keep your money because you're trading money for nothing a lot of times on these. But this one I, I did think was pretty cool. It is the Thimble Kickstarter by David uh, Brenner and Oscar Pedroso. And really this is Box of the Month for Internet of Things. So Box of the Month is huge. You have things like Birchbox, Faithbox, all this monthly subscription will send you something new every month. That is all of the rage right now. And these guys wanted to throw Internet of Things into the mix. And so the idea behind this is that every month you would be sent a new uh, kit with parts that go along with tutorials to teach you something about making and Internet of Things type stuff to, uh, they, they target it to 13 and up. And it's really, I don't know, I like the idea. Uh, from their Kickstarter, they say, series of monthly delivered kits that help you understand the fundamentals of electronics and how hardware and software come together so you can innovate and invent from the comfort of your own home. So the Kickstarter is to start the first group of those monthly uh, packets, which will be centered around building a Wi-Fi enabled robot. Uh, as of today, they are around $32,000 of their $25,000 target. So they have been funded and they are looking to ship the first kits uh, between April and June of next year. All right, next up, this one, this one's interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to bash on these guys a little bit. I know this is news and I'm not just here to spew news to you. I'm going to add my own opinion because I can. And this is coming from uh, Beta, spelled B-8-T-A. This is founded by uh, four of the Nest alums, guys that uh, started Nest. And what they have done is they are creating an Internet of Things storefront, an actual physical bricks and mortar store to sell Internet of Things products. And the idea behind this is Silicon Valley is creating tons of hardware startups. Most of them are worthless. Not, not relevant. There's still tons of products coming out. We're still figuring out this Internet of Things market. And they, they keep saying it's really hard to get into retail stores. No kidding. That's because nobody knows what the Internet of Things is. And so uh, this company, Beta, wants to give people... Uh, startups, a place to sell their products. They will have them unwrapped and on shelves. They, people can play with them and interact with them. All of these store employees will have experience using them and can demo them. And they, they also say that they'll provide you all of this feedback to how 
people are receiving them in person and there's software to manage your, your sales and how you can interact with the store on the back end. And, you know, I'm so sick of the something as a service. Everything's as a service nowadays because, you know, the cloud. And this is their, their billing retail as a service because the model for making money here is different. Instead of taking a percentage of sales, what they are going to do is actually lease space in the store. Uh, they're only going to open one store at this point. It's a, like 1,400 square feet in Palo Alto, California. And you will pay, as a hardware startup, you will pay them a monthly fee to have your product in the store so that they can demo it. And, you know, they talk about the software to help you manage it. The, one of my favorites was, the software will give the hardware startup the ability to experiment with sales and update marketing material that appears on the digital signage to see how it impacts sales. Like, what am I missing here? This is a website. Like, if you're selling online, you can update the digital signage to see how it affects conversion on your website. So, I don't know. This, this is an interesting idea. I think the problem is, is they're going after a market that's just not going to exist in five years. And that's, we don't need an Internet of Things store. We just need stores. And how much longer we'll actually need those, I don't know. But, you know, when things get big enough and actually mainstream and useful enough, like Nest, they end up in your Home Depot uh, or your Best Buy. And so there seems like they're getting into a market that they can't compete in. I mean, because once products are known enough, they will be sold in the normal stores that we go to. And now you're competing with Walmart. Maybe they're hoping to be bought out by like a Walmart or Best Buy or something. I, I don't know. But just not super interesting. I mean, I think what's interesting, and if, if this is real, if you go out and you ask people if they know what a Nest is, I mean, not your tech friends. Just ask your, your uncle, Uncle Bob. Go ask Uncle Bob if he knows what Nest is. I mean, my data on this is 9 out of 10 people. I live in the Northwest by Seattle. This is an extreme tech area. 9 out of 10 people have no idea what the Nest is. Uh, and I would, I would say 10 out of 10 because there's a rare person, but almost 10 out of 10 have no idea what the Internet of Things is. So I don't see this as a scaling business. We're not going to have thousands of Internet of Things stores across the nation selling Internet of Things products. So anyway, it's news coming out of Silicon Valley, so I figured I'd report it and, you know, take a shot at it a little bit. Um, prove me wrong, though, guys. Beta. Uh, what I do think would be interesting on this, though, real quick, I know I'm taking a long time on this, but what I think would be interesting is if you took this a la food truck, like if you had like a semi or a, a huge truck that you wanted to tour across the nation and park in the parking lot of the Best Buy and like show people Internet of Things and raise the exposure for that while simultaneously selling Internet of Things products, I think that could be a little more interesting, but brick and mortar storefronts, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, the big news this week coming out of Arduino. And that is the announcement of the new Arduino MKR1000. This is the newest member of the Arduino family. Let me just give you the specs on this really quick. It's got a 32-bit low-power ARM microcontroller, 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi built in, so you do not need a shield for this. It Now, here's an interesting kind of deviation from normal Arduino. You power it with 5 volts, but it is a 3.3 volt platform, meaning the pins are only 3.3 volt tolerant. So if you have all your setup with 5 volt interactions with your Arduino, you're going to have to make some adjustment, adjust, adjustments for this new uh, MKR1000. It is 3.3 volts. And they expect to start shipping these in February of next year. However, if you would like to get one before that, they also, in tandem with the announcement of the MKR1000, they announced this massive Arduino Maker Challenge contest where they are going to pick a thousand people who submit projects, a uh, thousand people to receive an MKR1000 to promote this contest. Now, this contest is a collaboration between um, Arduino, Hackster, Microsoft and even Adafruit's uh, getting involved a little bit here. So this this thing was big news this week. This is everybody is talking about this, and let me just give you the the contest rules here. Um, you know, being in a collaboration with all these people, you're going to see all the different players play in here. You need to use an Arduino Uno or an MKR1000. So only a thousand people are going to get a pre-release. MKR1000. And so if you're not one of them, you can still participate. You just need to use an Arduino Uno. And you need to build a universal Windows app. 
that helps control the Arduino through APIs like uh, Microsoft's uh, Virtual Shields for Arduino and Windows Remote Wiring uh, for Arduino. Those are projects coming out of Microsoft. So Microsoft obviously here trying to raise awareness of their involvement in Internet of Things and uh, Windows IoT Core, I'm assuming as well. And uh, it says uh, number three for bonus points include Azure services like Azure IoT Suite, Hub, Stream Analytics, Machine Learning, and a bunch of other stuff that Microsoft offers. And so I will uh, include a link up down below. Uh, you submit your project ideas through Hackster. They're going to pick 1,000 people, give them an MKR 1,000 um, before they go mainstream public. And then three winners, uh, people can submit their projects. The three sort of grand prize winners on this are going to have a full expense paid trip to one of the big maker fairs. We've got one in Shenzhen, uh, New York, the Bay Area, or Rome. You will be invited to... Um, participate in either the Arduino or Microsoft booth at those shows and showcase your project that you built. Um, in addition, those uh, top three winners will, will receive a $500 gift card uh, to Adafruit. So sort of big collaboration there. It's all the talk. A couple of deadlines you need to be aware of um, to submit your project idea to win one of those MKR 1000s. Those close on January 15th, so you've got about a month to get those in. The 1,000 winners will be notified by January 22nd, and then project submissions start February 1st. Uh, again, if you didn't get one of those MKR 1000s, you can use an Arduino Uno and still submit a project idea. Um, that starts on February 1st. Uh, submissions close on the 14th, and they will notify the winners by the 18th. And so that, like I said, big news this week, uh, probably one of the biggest contests with a lot of big players collaborating to make it happen. And that brings us to this week's Tweet of the Week. Nice segue as usual. And this is from Atmel Makes. Uh, and it was just this. It was, today's Arnoido news has got makers all like. And it's totally true. I mean, Twitter and all these other social outlets were just completely abuzz for makers of just super excited about this and wanting to get into the action. So um, if you're interested, hop in. Throw your, your hat into the contest, see if you can get an MKR 1000, and good luck if you do. Um, that does it for this week's episode of the news. I did want to say thank you again. I'm super humbled by the number of people that continue to follow and people leaving comments down uh, in the comments. I really appreciate that. I love hearing from people, and I wanted to start giving like more specific asks so that I don't just say, hey, comment in the you know, comments below. So you're like, I don't know what to say. So I'm going to ask a specific question. And this week that is, do you plan on submitting a project for the Arduino Maker Challenge? And you don't have to give me details or tell me what the project is. If you want to just put a simple yes or no down in the comments, that would mean a lot to me. Just let me know that you're out there. And it just, I really feed off of that. It gets me excited to keep filming the news. And so are you going to participate? Just yes or no. And if you want to leave project details, that would be awesome too. I love reading those. So that does it for this week's episode of the news. Really appreciate you watching. Hope you have a great week. And until next week, happy hacking.